All right, then we are officially getting started. Welcome back from the very long break, Martin Luther King's Day. It feels like it, the class is just starting brand new again. So I'm going to spend a few minutes and refresh your memory on a few things. Then we're going to build that Fahrenheit and Celsius app because uh, I don't think that many people actually built it. Did you build it, Fahrenheit and Celsius? Uh, yes. You did? Oh, do you guys not want to do it then? We don't have to. We can move right along. Well, we'll build it anyway. I'll just build it fast. Did you build the Celsius and Fahrenheit app? No. Oh, you didn't do it? Okay, good. Did you build it? You don't even have a MacBook. This is the first time. Oh, my. Let's build it from scratch. How's that? And I'll try to make it more interesting so those of you who did build it will make it a little different. How's that? So we'll build a Celsius to Fahrenheit app, and we will also build a clock today. Maybe I'll do the clock first, actually, to get us warmed up, make it more interesting. And if you just joined us today and you're curious about what in the world I'm talking about, find this website, www.bhacker.com. You'll see the videos of the previous two weeks. This is the third class meeting, which is kind of odd. The uh, tutorials I'm going to run through today are going to be in the... Um, uh, source code examples subfolder of course materials and they are going to be something about data here it is using data types tutorial this is the uh, one that's called data this is the Fahrenheit to Celsius it's called data types because we're going to create some data and then we're going to convert the data from one to another which is the basic manipulation of data that's what this one's all about and then the other one we're going to look at is called the digital clock tutorial and in fact, maybe I'll do the digital clock first so I can keep you guys the attention of those people who already did the data types. But if you did the data types, you may run into problems with it. You may not have, but we'll see. We'll kind of brush, brush through that. And then I can refresh your memory and talk more about data types. Because the last time we talked about data and we're using data types, I talked about property, talked about synthesize, if I remember this correctly. And we got into the concept of building programs, and today was the, I kind of left you guys with some stuff to do for the week that we missed, and today was kind of the, uh, now we're back and we're regrouping. So, uh, there's another thing I'd like to point out before I start, actually, is that the EMS, for IT students, the EMS is now populated with the assignments that you need, and there's two assignments for the first five weeks of the course, and the assignment due dates are in there as well. If you go into the uh, bhacker.com website, you can find those two assignments. If you're an ITU student, you should be working on these two assignments. The assignments are assignment number one and assignment number two in the assignments folder. You know, there's just six assignments. So the course is broken out, just refresh your memory, or for brand new people, into five-week segments. There's three of them for 15 weeks total. The first five weeks is focusing on assignment number one and number two. The second one is on three and four. The last one is on five and six. So if you're an outside student and you're looking to get college credit for this course, you have to do all the assignments well, for the class that you're taking. So first two is the one for this particular one unit option. And if you have questions about that, you can come see me at the break and I can discuss all this stuff with you. Um, but I want to bring up assignment number one to kind of show you what that's about because I haven't done that yet. Assignment number one is here and I have downloaded it and uh, you can actually do this one right now and let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it you can also bring it up on your page I just basically clicked and downloaded it there's a nice little link in here that I thought maybe I'd also point out as well just in case you weren't doing the assignment you can easily do this assignment however it's not too bad so what are you doing hi. yes hi, hi. Um, I just started the course. Did you want to make an announcement or something? Yeah. I can pause. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Let me pause. My All right, let's resume this. Um, now, uh, and I'll, I'll save this as a separate kind of video so you can kind of see this is on assignment number one, and I'll try and label it that way. Uh, but what are we looking at here? If you uh, want to show your competency in terms of your ability to program an Objective-C, after the first couple weeks of the course, you should be able to do this assignment no problem. And some of you probably can, actually. It's looking at conditional logic. And conditional logic is something I hadn't really explained very much with, but we're going to talk about it today, actually. And uh, doing using if, then, else, conditions, and booleans to evaluate something to true and false. So the object of this exercise here is to create a program of your choice. It's in two parts. Part one's called conditional logic. Part number two is called methods and parameters. So in part number one, you can actually you can put this into one program if you want. 
It could be a DOS program or it can be an iPhone or an iPad, iOS application as well. It's probably easier at this point to write a DOS program with it. If you're going to do that, you can put it all into one. <coughs> it's no program, there's absolutely no program theme. Instead, what we have are concepts. So if you read through the description, I'm not going to read it to you, you can read it on your own. But what we're looking at is conditional logic and being able to use it and looking at the lifetime of the application, lifetime of variables, and the NS object kind of concept. As I mentioned on the, hopefully on the first day of class, everything in the language is an object. And so if everything is an object, even integers and floats, everything's an object. We, we treat them like objects and they're sort of like references and they're not really values. So the entire language is dynamic in nature and everything is a reference. So if you said if object number one was equal to object number two, would that ever be true if we were going to do a comparison that way? And I brought up a little example here. I don't have this available to you, so I'm only showing this to you as an illustrative purpose. Oh, maybe I can make this bigger here. Hold on one second. <coughs> mm, let's make this about, oh, there we go. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. And I just actually just kind of wrote this before the class started. <laughs> I guess I was looking for an example and I couldn't come up with one. I've got two strings because, uh, as I mentioned before, everything's an object. So we have NS, if we're looking at NS objects, we have NS string, my first string, and then my second string. And if we say, oops, this is a typo already. If I say uh, my string, uh, well, my string doesn't exist. So this would be my first string. Let me correct my example while I'm. Uh, talking to you, my first string and then my second string is equal to two arbitrary strings, even if they were equal to the same thing, as an example, if I go like this and go my value. This operator here, this is going to produce an error. If we say that my second string is equal to, well, it's going to produce an error for multiple reasons. Let me change it right now. First string. If I said my second string is, is it equal to my first string? What we're looking at, and I'm going to, for those people who don't, who have never taken a programming course before, let me just start with a little bit of refresh your memory on operators. If I say, you know, uh, integer i, which is actually legal in Objective C, I can go i plus i equals something, and I'm looking at, a, at arithmetic with a plus, and I can go i minus i, and I'm looking at subtraction, and then I have multiplication, division. It's just like any other programming language, Objective-C works the same way. For comparison, we use the double equals here. So this is actually two equal signs together. And if we're doing a comparison in this particular case, what we're looking for is an evaluation to a true or a false. It's a Boolean expression. So we can say, is this number bigger than that number, and believe it or not, it actually works. Is this number smaller than that number? Even though they're objects, it actually still works. The weird thing is, is a string object here that has a little bit of interesting characteristic to it because it's a NS string. So if I use the same expression with i and it says i equal to a and they're both equal to 1, that would actually be legal. That would work. So we have primitive data types, but we also have this object data type, which is where this next step string object is coming into place which causes problems in the logic so the goal of the first assignment is to make this make you aware of this concept in, in general so what you're going to do is some sort of a fix like here's the fix down here on the bottom and the fix down here on the bottom is going to use a method call and it's going to say my second string is going to send to it is equal to string my this should say first string actually first first string and so this method call here we know is a method call this is now refreshing your memory here we, we know that this is a method call and that this colon is giving us a parameter if it were taking on two parameters we go space another colon and then second parameter etc but it only takes on one and so now we know that um, we have to use a is equal to string, is equal to integer, is equal to float. If we're using ns integer, ns float, ns, all of the ns's for all of the object types in the language. So I kind of gave it away in this little example here, um, which is why I'll record this as a separate video, actually. Because then people will go, where is that example? And let me go back to the assignment here. <coughs> the assignment, if you choose to do it, um, which hopefully if you're an ITU student you will, for a grade, 
what you're looking at is what is what is this object about? Looking at conditional logic, going through the complicated uh, technique of doing some of these tasks down here. So you use at least one case of each of the following. You write a program of your choice. It can be a command line program where you say if the statement uh, using the equals equals operator. That's just what I just showed you a few minutes ago. So if you're using a string, you want to use is equal to to do a comparison that way. Um, you may also experiment in the same program and say, what about if I do two integers? And I can check to see if they're equal. And that's going to work, actually. And so knowing the differences between the objects, especially the NS object type, and the main integers themselves, also use an if statement using the is equal to method. So do it with two integers or two floats, and then with two objects. And I just showed you the syntax, actually, to the is equal to. And then use some compound logic with the ands and the ors. And then uh, perform a logical test to see if something is not true using the not operator. So what I've done also is provided you a link on the bottom. And this is to the Apple. Um, in fact, my link is not working because I have this loaded up in preview. If you load this up in MS Word and you press on Control click, it'll open up the um, Apple website for you for the documentation. It will actually show you how to uh, perform all of this stuff, actually. There's a lot more reading, however. Um, and then part two <coughs> deals with methods and parameters. So what we're looking at is how to do a method call. So methods are functions, obviously, and they perform a task, uh, a particular type of, of task that you want to be performing. And the task might involve um, some variables. It may also involve some properties of objects and something, you know, maybe some extra information. So create an Xcode project using the OSX command line tool template, or a iPhone or an iPad or iOS, it doesn't matter which one you use. And you can use the same project as used in the first parts, put both of them together, create a custom class that contains at least three methods and one private, three public methods and one private method. So the pluses and the minuses, I'm going to review all of this stuff because I know some of you have lost track of Objective C over the last week of break. Um, so. <clears throat> we will essentially have a quick review at the beginning, but uh, go ahead and exercise public and private methods in this class. Your theme is totally up to you. If you want to take one of my previous examples and cut, a, cut and paste away on it to make it work, you may do that, actually. You may recycle it, as long as you're including these components. Questions on that first assignment? It's kind of a quick preview of it, but... Uh, so people who are thinking, um, you know, thinking about working ahead can start working on that. You should be able to do that at this point. You should hopefully be able to struggle with it a little bit, but might actually be able to do it. So we're going to go back down memory lane for a few minutes, sir, because I never finished this first lecture. We started it, but I never finished it. And then we'll kind of take a break from it and look at the, the clock example. <coughs> So just to refresh everybody's memories, I don't have to go through why we're going to do Objective-C or anything like that. We know that we have methods, so we know, we know about the object at this point, and we know that in the object we have data, and we have, me uh, we have methods to manipulate that data. And uh, actually, you know what, I'm going to stop this video <laughs> because I forgot to hold, hold on.